Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This week's video is much different from my usual ones as in this video I'm going to be going over my portfolio that got me into these universities in the UK for an animation course. Videos like this one were of great help while I was working on my own portfolio and there aren't as many videos for UK portfolios as there are for say Calarts or Sher Sheridan. So I thought I'd share my own portfolio to possibly help anyone out there. And I'd just like to preface this video by saying that my portfolio was by no means perfect and there is always room for improvement. When I structured my portfolio based on how a Sheridan portfolio would be structured, starting with anatomy, then observation and so on, because I was really confused about what order to put everything in. And with that out of the way, let's get into the portfolio. First off, I included figure drawing, which is an invariable part of all portfolios. It is something that most animation courses require. The first page was two finished figure paintings to not just show my understanding of anatomy, but also the fact that I use different mediums. Next, I included some quicker studies, which I really don't have anything to say about. But again, you can see me exploring different mediums, like I used oil pastels and colored pencils in this one. And now moving on to some quick gesture studies from my sketchbook that I put together in a collage on the right and on the left are some digital de gestures from a while back. If you don't look too long, they seem fine so I thought I'd include them either way. Next I included some hands and feet studies. Here in both layouts I showed some quicker sketches on the left with a more finished piece on the right to show that I applied what I learned from those studies into a finished piece. I wasn't expecting either of these spreads to turn out as good as they did and I'm pretty happy about it. The skeletal studies I put in are definitely not a requirement but I felt I should include some so I made these quickly without putting in too much effort into them. These dance gestures are like really really old but I thought of putting them in either way because they are a lot of work and this actually looks fine considering I devoted like 15 seconds to each of these. You'll see a lot of this in the Calar sketchbook, so that is where I got the inspiration to do this from. What I did basically was slow down a dance video and quickly drew tiny gesture drawings of what I could see. This sketchbook spread might be my least favorite piece from the entire portfolio. I'm not entirely sure what, but it seems to lack something and it honestly feels a bit forced, so if I could, I'd probably remove this piece from my portfolio. I've been told that this page doesn't exactly fit in with the vibe of the rest of my portfolio but I honestly feel it looks really good and shows that I understand perspective and structure and that I can draw non-human things too. Then I put in some frog studies to just add some di diversity and variety into my portfolio and I did this with alcohol markers and it in a very small way ties into the next spread in my portfolio. This layout design spread is easily my favorite one and the one I'm most proud of. This is the only finished layout design I've ever done in my life and I'm really happy with how this turned out. On the left, I have some studies of images I found on Pinterest which I did in my sketchbook using gouache, which might not be the best thing to put in your portfolio but I did anyway with my, with my fingers crossed. This is a really fun page with my character design process from start to finish, from this tiny thumbnail sketch to a finished character. From what I've seen, showing your process should be a crucial part of your portfolio to see your creative process and how you got from point A to point B. The next two pages are meant to go together as the first one is a character turnaround and some expressions from for my OC Claire and the second one is a storyboard featuring her. I'm not really sure about how storyboards work or how they're supposed to be structured, but as long as it tells a story and it makes sense, I think that's okay. I'll try and link some resources down in the description, so be sure to check that out. Next, I included some perspective drawing, which I'm not a massive fan of, so I don't know how to feel about this one. I remember being really really proud of the piece on the right at the time that I made it, but looking back, the colors seemed really really muddy. and it doesn't honestly look as good as I remember it looking. Next is some personal work which is just two self portraits with no real meaning to them. I just thought they looked cool so I put them in. Here is the process for a massive massive painting I did for a firm which I included solely because I mentioned it in my personal statement. 
I made sure to include work that I brought up in my personal statement in my portfolio. So as that is some advice that I got. So here is some thumbnailing, color exploration, and progress shots followed by the final painting. The last part of my portfolio was an equally big project that took me three weeks to make. A little animation I made for the song Cherry Bomb. Here is the initial storyboard, some exploratory sketches, and the initial design that I had for the character, which ends up looking significantly different by the end. Then I included a couple of shots from the rough animatic and her final design. If you'd like to see the final animation, I'll link it in the description and in the i card if I remember to do that. The first one would be to start as early as you can and make as much as you can so that you have a lot of stuff to sort through by the end and you don't have to panic and put things together near the deadline. This also helps prevent burnout by the end as you won't need to push yourself to make more pieces. The most important thing is to see what your uni wants. The overall requirements for the animation course are more, mostly similar but it doesn't hurt to check again. Referencing portfolio videos like this one can be of great help to find a starting point, but be sure not to outright copy someone else's work. If you need more ideas, you could look into Sheridan Animation or Kalaj portfolios too. Like I mentioned earlier, it's important to show your process wherever you can, but it doesn't have to be everywhere. The last one is not necessary, but it's great if you can show you explore different mediums, even if you're not good at them. I really hope this video was of some help to you. I'll try to include some helpful links in the description and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.